I, I'm, I'm at that age where I should be wearing bifocals, and, and I'm taking my glasses on and off, and oh God, I'm going to get dizzy here. But <laughs> The next group um, that will um, be presenting is the National Council of Women of Canada. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for this opportunity to speak briefly on behalf of the National Council of Women of Canada. My name is Margaret McGee. As the Justice Chair of the National Council of Women of Canada, I served as the Council's representative on the Task Force on Federally Sentenced Women, which was both an exciting and a very painful experience. NCWC supported the recommendations of the Task Force report, Creating Choices, a report which Council felt would provide empowerment, meaningful and responsible choices, respect and dignity, a supportive environment, and shared responsibility. NCWC, like other equality-seeking organizations, waited patiently and then impatiently for government action on creating choices. What we have ended up with is five regional prisons, none of which is fulfilling the vision of creating choices. Have we created a situation for federally sentenced women which is worse than the old Kingston prison for women? And quite truthfully, I can't think of anything that's worse than the Kingston prison for women, but I'm truly concerned about what has happened. NCWC fully supports the complaint to the Human Rights Commission of the Canadian Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies that federally incarcerated women are discriminated against on the basis of sex, race, and disability, and we feel there is no longer any need for this to be proven. The consultation paper for the special report on the situation of federally sentenced women, which came out in January 2003, 2003, very neatly lays out the legislation which affects federally sentenced women and the principles and dreams of creating choices. These principles for change were expressed through a plan which provides meaningful choices for federally sentenced women in the immediate term, but which is set with a context that looked forward to long-term fundamental change in the criminal justice system's response to women in conflict with the law. Now, I'm not going to elaborate on the initiatives from creating choices which were to take place. These have all been laid out for you um, and clearly talk about the classification system, medium and minimum security facilities, which we have grave concerns about, and also the involvement of the community in health, education, and employment training, which we feel is quite important. And that's all there in that, in that consultation paper. The question to be asked is, why has the move to regional prisons not been a success? Now we heard Trish talked about that this morning. It's hard to understand, you know, why are the charges of discrimination being laid at this time? and we do not want the same mistake to be made a second time. Is it because the correctional services, the Government of Canada, did not involve the knowledgeable personnel, those with expertise in working with federally sentenced women, in the development and implementation of the regional prisons? That was something which the National Council certainly expected was going to happen. In currently working with other national equality-seeking groups regarding the systemic review by the Canadian Human Rights Commission of the Human Rights Violations of Women Prisoners by Corrections Canada, the National Council has revisited with these groups the work of the task force and involved current or former federally sentenced women in examining today's situation. We have again inflicted pain and we have felt pain. I think that you have felt the pain that has, was expressed with our first presentation this morning. Well over a decade has passed since the publication of Creating Choices with its recommendations to end discrimination. And the National Council of Women of Canada urges the Canadian Human Rights Commission to work with speed and commitment 
to ensure that this charge of discrimination against federally sentenced women is finally recognized officially and acted upon very quickly. I know Kim said this morning that it's about starting again, but if we're starting again, there is no way that we should inflict more pain on the federally sentenced women who have had such great input to the work that we have done. That is not necessary and we do not have to prove our discrimination. I just leave you with this little phrase which is credited to Eleanor Roosevelt. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And our dreams are beautiful and we believe in them. Thanks. Thank you, Margaret.